Hi guys and welcome back to our FIFA 18 Rebuilding Sunderland Career Mode. So, in this episode we have four games for you. We have Spurs at, at White Hart Lane or Wembley still. I think, yeah, it is still Wembley for some strange reason. I thought they would have changed that in FIFA after the one year at Wembley. I thought they might put it back to White Hart Lane, but the Havens will be at Wembley to play Spurs followed by a game against Anderlecht in the Champions League. And then we take on Manchester City at the Stage of Malight. And then last but not least, we take on Swansea, which I'm sure we've played them like four times already this season somehow, so I'll probably simulate that because I'm just sick of it. But before we do get into the episode, we have received a notification letting us know that Harry Winks has suffered a broken metatarsal, which is an absolute nightmare. He's out for five weeks, which isn't too bad. I was expecting to say it something like five months. And we do have backup, we have Enriquez who can play there, as well as uh, Van Ginkel as well, and other players. Hoyluck could even fill in as a cam. So we're pretty covered there, but it is a bit of a devastating blow for Harry Winks. So let's get into the first game of the episode, away at Spurs. And here we are guys, at Wembley Stadium, to play Spurs. We do have a little bit of a rivalry against Spurs, if some of you long-time uh, viewers can remember. We lost against them in the first season in the FA Cup semi-final and then I think we struggled to beat them the next time we played them when we did get promoted to the Premier League we eventually did get a win over them but so hopefully we can continue with that and as you just saw on the league table we're very close with Spurs as well so it's a it's a bit of a top of the table clash today and here is the Spurs lineup they're going with Vorm in goal Rafael Astori Fernandez and Wendell across the back that's a really strong back line and Zonzi in Guy as well with Keko or Kiko, Ericsson and Kudu and Jansson up top. It's a very, very strong lineup and I really like Nzonzi. I'm a massive fan of his as well. And as for our lineup, we've got Courtois in goal, Eorfa, Twanzaby, Subatic and Walker Peters facing his old club as well. Vieira, Enriquez and Mvia in the middle. Harrison on the right, Martial on the left with Andre Gray up top. And away we go, guys. Come on. Oh, they do break really quickly. Spurs and Courtois gathers easily, really. And we do find Gray coming down this right. That's a good ball for him. Harrison to find Gray. It's still Gray. He brings it back to the byline. Cuts it back. Surely. Oh, it nearly fell to Enriquez. Oh, and Harrison is dispossessed. Wendell. He's still going, Harrison. He needs support. Tries to dink one over the top. To chase onto it. Can he get there? Andre Gray and I think he's giving away a free kick there. It was a really good chance for us. Causing them a little bit of problems. Oh, is Gray offside? Yeah, he was. He all for on to Harrison down this right side. Brilliantly done from Harrison. Needs support. Gets it in towards Enriquez. And that is a top class save from Michelle Vaughan. Corner taken short to Jack Harrison. He does pull it back. Needs help. Gets it to the near post and Enriquez can't quite get there. Spurs are actually really struggling to keep hold of the ball at the minute. Not that I'm complaining. And we do find Gray in on this left hand side. It's at the post. Get it back in. Cleared away. Dominating this opening period. But I am very wary of that switch that can just go at any moment, but now here is Enriquez, who's got aches of space, he's come inside neatly, Enriquez, it's been blocked, it finds Harrison, and he's placed it straight into the arms of Vorm, we're playing really, really good stuff here, Via with a bit of room and time, and it's fizzed high and wide, don't know what's going on with Spurs in this game, they're losing the ball constantly, making little errors, again, I'm not complaining, but it's not like Spurs are normally one of the tougher teams to play, and they have been in this series for me. And there goes half-time whistle, guys. It's been a brilliant performance. We've really pinned Spurs into their own half for this game. They've barely come into our half whatsoever. They haven't even had one chance, I don't think. Yeah, there we go. We can see <laughs> they've had no shots at all. We've had a bit of better possession than them, and we've had plenty of efforts ourselves. We just need to put our chances away, because we're known to just collapse after being on top for so long here's Vieira straight away, still Vieira, he needs support still Vieira, takes a touch round, his man has a strike and he's lashed it over the bar oh it's a great ball from Walker Peters to find, Martial he comes inside, it's still Martial and his shot's been blocked brilliantly, why have you just done that man, 
Yeah, another chance to get a second attempt in, and he's done that stupid animation like he's tackling someone when no one had the ball. Come on, boys. Go on, Gray, make your own son. And he's passed it to the wrong man. I'm bloody sick of this. Last couple of episodes this has been happening. Well in, Vieira. Find your man. And again, find Gray. It's that final through ball that just isn't going for us. Spurs are starting to put us under a bit of pressure for the first time in this entire game. And this is... That's a great challenge from Upper Meccano. Why is no one going to the ball? What on earth is going on there? Are you for your six foot five? You should be towering above him there and you just ran away from the ball completely. You just find Enriquez. Can he cut it back? He can! Oh, and he's hit it wide. What a chance. And MV has been booked for a earlier challenge. Now I am going to bring MV off and bring Van Ginkel on. I'm also going to bring uh, Wilson on for the final few moments of the game. We should be way out of sight by now, guys. We should. It has been an absolutely excellent performance, attacking-wise. We just haven't put our chances away. And Spurs are slowly getting into the game as well now, which is really worrying. Going to him. Well in the off. Oh, come off it, man. You can't touch a bloody player in this game. It's a contact sport. And Spurs do have the free kick. Whips in by Ericsson. Get it away. Only as far as a story on the edge of the box. Well in. And they've given another free kick. Nothing happened. Oh, I can't. You're giving him this game, man. You're giving it him. And they've hit the bar. Get it out. This is getting stupid now. Oh, and there goes a the full-time whistle, guys. That is such a frustrating game. Yes, yeah, Spurs were a good team, but they did not play like it in that game. We absolutely dominated from start to finish. And the referee just really <laughs> twisted my mood. Towards the end of the game, that should have been a win. Had a win written all over it. If we look at the stats, I know stats don't really mean anything in this game. They're absolutely corrupt. But yeah, there we go. Eight shots, four on target. And their last three efforts were towards the last five, ten minutes of the game. This game should have been put to bed long ago. But it is nil-nil. Before the game, that wouldn't have been the worst result. But given the brilliant performance that we did put on, we should have won that game. Anyway, onwards we go. And next up, we do have a game against bottom of our group and elect in the Champions League. It looks like we've already qualified for the next round. So I probably will try and stick a few different players in this game and see how they do. There's a few youngsters that I want to try out as well from the Youth Academy uh, and see if they can perform on the big stage. Off to Anderlecht we go. Come on! And here we are guys and like I did say I have put in a couple of the Youth Academy players in the lineup today, so we'll see how they fare against Anderlecht. It should be a tough test for them. And there is one of our new boys, Azevedo, as you might have briefly seen there. Big lad, centre forward. But as of right now, we've got the Anderlecht lineup, who I think I struggled really pronouncing any of these plays last time. We have Roy Fingol, Willems, and Bodge, Sa or Say or Sa, Afaya as well, Hani, Dendonka, Samaris, Karuti, Stanchu, Stanchu. And the blah 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 up top. I'm really bad at pronouncing names. I just can't be bothered embarrassing myself. <laughs> so for us, we do have Courtois in goal. Shaw, Barsha, Foyth and Alexander Arnold across the back. Koke and Van Ginkel in the middle. A Youth Academy star, or player at least. Godin is the Cam. Calvert-Lewin on the left. Masonda on the right. And Azevedo up top. Azevedo is, like I say, naturally a sense forward. He's a big lad. Let's see if he can do some damage today. It's a good ball for Godin here. Nicely done from Godin. Tries to pull it. Why has he pulled it back to there? Calvert Lewin! Oh, and he's bent it wide a goal. But pull back, went to the wrong man. As I keep complaining about, especially over the last couple of episodes, but the effort has gone just wide. Knocking it around nicely and the walking past our players are over committing ourselves. It's a good chance and we give away a free kick in a stupid position there. They've had a strike and they've hit it high and wide, luckily for us. Knocking it around nicely now. Here is Godin, who seems pretty decent, especially in these opening stages, keeping that ball nicely. A few little moves we've seen from him so far. Calvert-Lewin tries to get it inside. It's been intercepted. Probably just going to need a few nice, short, quick passes around their area to break them down. They seem really tight at the back. I don't think going wide is going to be an option today, really. 
I think we might actually have to just go wide because we've got so many men in front of that box. We might have to go wide and maybe whip balls into Azevedo. He's a big man. It's a different option for us and he's played it to the wrong man again. I wanted Azevedo and he's offside. Oh, God. So much complaining from me. <laughs> Van Ginkel. He does find Masonda. Comes inside. Still Masonda with the effort. Oh, it's a good save from the keeper. It's our first real effort in test for the... Anderlecht goalkeeper might try and whip one in to the near post. He has done. Still in and around the area. Azevedo with a good strong header. He has from Shaw. Nicks it back for Koke. Who can't hit one but he can't really work the ring. But here he is Azevedo with the effort. He does find Lewin and he's struck it wide. And that marks the half time point in this game. It's been really, really difficult. The young lads haven't done too badly actually. They haven't looked too out of place but we just... Really struggling to break down the Sanderlecht defence. They've been brilliant in this game defensively. They haven't really troubled us at the other end. But we just need to try and find that key to unlock that defence. Here is Masonda. Azevedo, get in the box, mate. Don't come short. I need your head in there, son. We win the corner. Why is Azevedo on the edge of the box? He should be in there, man. You're the tallest player on the pitch. But anyway, it's whipped into Bartra and it's been cleared away. I think when you come off the back of a nil-nil draw, you just... You're almost frightened to try new things and you're very standard with the way you're playing. Surely that's offside, it is, thank God. Here's Van Ginkel now. Can he strike one? He can and it's an absolute beauty. The first bit of class we've had and seen in this game comes from Van Ginkel. Lovely drop of the shoulder and then it's an absolute rocket from some distance as well. He smashed it past the goalkeeper it's a lovely lovely goal 1-0 finally a breakthrough oh come on boys you're falling all over the place and we've given away a corner 10 minutes remain I don't want to throw this lead away get it away well in Masonda come on well play come on boys giving too much away here and Courtois makes the save Calm down. We're losing it in daft areas. We really don't need to. As soon as we get to that final third, we don't have anything. And maybe that's just the. It's a good save from Courtois. Maybe that is just the. Just if, maybe that is just the inexperience of the youngsters up top. The movement isn't fantastic, as expected, really. And there goes the full time whistle. And as I was saying, I think it was just because our strike force was pretty much Azevedo and Godin. Godin looked probably the better of the two youngsters. He is uh, considerably higher rated than Azevedo. I think Azevedo is rated 65, whereas Godin is rated 73. He looks a lot more comfortable on the ball, Godin. His close control was decent. He's very, very weak, though. And Azevedo, even though he is a big brute and he does have a bit of strength behind him, it was his ball control that was letting him down a lot. And, and that was coming through a lot of the game when I wanted him to hold the ball up. The ball was running loose. He couldn't keep it under control. And he wasn't really winning much in the air either. But it was a relatively even game, as you can see. And it has finished 1-0. And it is a good experience for the youngsters as well. And next up, we do take on Manchester City at the Stadium of Malai. Ignore the lineup because that is going to be changing in a moment. It's going to be a really, really difficult team to play. I'm not really sure where they are in the league. We'll check that out in just a moment. But as for now, let's go to the Stadium of Light. And here we are, guys. It is a rainy day in Sunderland where we are welcoming Manchester City. be interesting to see who they've still got from the original squad a couple of years ago. I can't really remember what signings they did make last year, but we will see in just a moment. Oh, it looks like they do have Manquillo, or Manquillo, however you want to say it, who we did used to have when we loaned him from Liverpool. And he has, well, in real life, he's um, now with Newcastle. Sorry, I, I get a bit sick saying that word. And there is Pep in the dugout. And here is our lineup with Courtois in goal. Eorfa, Twanzaby, Up McConnell, and Henry across the back four. And Dong, Enriquez, and Envia. In midfield, Harrison on the right, Martial on the left with Callum Wilson up front. And here is the Manchester City lineup. We've got Murek in goal, Mankillo, Facey, Humphreys Grant, Adarabayo, Adarabayo, and Rojas across the back. De Bruyne, Patching, Fernandinho in the middle with Forpala and Coyote 
up top. It looks like they've lost a lot of players, but if you look at the bench, they had an awful lot of strength there. Aguero and everyone on the bench as well. It's as if they're playing a League Cup game, unless fitness levels are down. They've pretty much got a reserve team out here. Here is Henry. Oh, I do love Henry. The amount of pace he's got is ridiculous. It's almost unfair. Go on, Henry. Look at that, man. Well in. He's still going, Henry. He's an absolute beast. Get it in, son. Bit sweaty. Well played. Here is Wilson. He does need support. He's trying to find and Dong! It's a good save from the keeper. And he lashes at it. And it's gone wide a goal. It's a bright start. Now it is. Harrison still. Harrison. Harrison still going. He's struck it. It's a good save from the keeper. But we have got the ball back now. He's got it into the box. He's trying to find Harrison again. He knocks away. And Dong finds Enriquez on the strike. And it's a brilliant save. What a goal that would have been from Enriquez. Short for Harrison. Get it in, son. He does find Wilson. And he's found his way in. It's crept its way in. In. Off the near post. Bit of a scrappy goal. But I do not mind whatsoever. And Callum Wilson is back amongst the goals. Harrison gets the ball in. Wilson gets there first. He's dragged it with his left foot. And I think it's... Hit the keeper's foot onto the near post and cross the line. It's 1-0 at the stage of my light. And Villa wins the ball nicely. It's still in Villa. And Villa has a strike and it's a simple save really. Here's Ndong. Still Ndong. He just find Wilson. Can he finish? He's been blocked. And again, hit the post and we've finished it off. I hope Marshall isn't in an offside position. He's not. It does count and it is 2-0. We've deserved it to be fair and this... Is hopefully the breakthrough of goals that we've needed. Get in, son. Oh, that's a good chance. Straight away, it's De Bruyne. And it's a great save from Courtois. We've saved our skin on several occasions in recent episodes. And there goes half-time whistle, guys. And it's another excellent performance, really. We defended really well. Courtois has saved us a couple of times. But it's really just Kevin De Bruyne who's running that Manchester City team is surrounded by reserve team players it looks like but he's trying to control the game himself and he's done a decent job to single-handedly cause us trouble but we are two goals to the good lovely football from the lads it's still Enriquez takes it round him Enriquez and the effort is really weak defensively we've been really really sound in this game winning the ball back again and he gets it over the top for Harrison, who's got loads of space. Bring it under your control, mate. Come on. And inside. Pass it over for Wilson. And it is 3-0. Get in, boys. Brilliant counter-attack. Harrison coming down that right-hand side. Finds Wilson. It was a little bit slow bringing it under control. But then eventually finishes into that far corner. And it's 3-0. De Bruyne. Patching. Oh, they've got it back in for De Bruyne. And we were just saying earlier that it's De Bruyne who's trying to run this game himself for City because he's surrounded by such lesser players. And he has got himself a goal and he does deserve it, to be fair. 3 1. It is Wilson. Come on, come inside. He's done it neatly. Keep going. Get it across goal. Pass the ball, man. But <laughs> it is. Full time, it's finished 3-1. We had dominated that game, really. They did go through the odd phase, Manchester City, where they put us under pressure, but we did deal with it for the majority of the time. And Dong and Envia in the middle were just godly, intercepting passes all the time, getting themselves stuck in and then giving it out to the, uh, the attacking-minded players to put City under pressure. So it has finished 3-1. Now, just to end the episode, we are going to simulate this game against Swansea City. Hopefully we come away with a win. We shall see. And we lose 1-0. Why do I keep doing this to myself, simulating games? But, oh dear. We've lost 1-0, guys, against Swansea, which still leaves us top of the league. We're one point clear ahead of Spurs. United are in third. West Ham in fourth. And if we look down to the bottom of the league, Everton, Burnley and Aston Villa take up the relegation spots. And as you can see, Manchester City are doing really badly so far this season. And I'm not surprised if they keep putting out the reserve team, if that is the case. But that is how the league table looks as of right now. And that marks the end of the episode, guys. If you did enjoy, please smash that like button and subscribe to become a fully-fledged member of the Sony Army. I know I keep mentioning it, but I am trying to hit 500 subscribers by the end of the year. So if you are enjoying the content and you're not yet subscribed, then 
please press that button if you want to. My Instagram, well the channel's Instagram is also in the links below, so be sure to follow that for early updates on videos that are coming out. But for now, you take care and stay jamming.